Ed is one of the most prominent aficionados of passementerie, certainly in the United States, but perhaps even in the world, and has been very instrumental in keeping this art form of passementerie, uh, this form of incredible embellishment alive in its most traditional sense. And there really are so few people who are a walking encyclopedia um, and have been involved in so many prominent restoration projects as Ed has. My name is Ed Goodman and I am a New Yorker. I've always lived here in New York. I've on, been on the most wonderful ride for 32 years, I'm gonna talk about properties that to me were most exciting uh, with making Passamontre. One was the Metropolitan Opera, the stage curtain. It, 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 a very huge drapery, and the bottom of it had a 31-inch bullion fringe. The next wonderful uh, installation that I did was at the White House. And I, I, I did work in the red room, the green room, the blue room, and the state dining room. Craftsmanship in passementry matters because the history of passementry is almost entirely handcraft. The thing behind passementry was it was made for royalty, the aristocracy, and nobility. There really wasn't a middle class that was using it. So they were embellishing their palaces, their castles, their country homes. And uh, it was a form of prestige to have passementry. Well, there is so much rich history and there is so much in the understanding of that traditional design language of ornamentation. Something that I find incredibly inspiring um, and I feel quite passionate about is that understanding of the traditional. We are able to reproduce them today and make them more accessible than they once were, only reserved for royalty. It's important to preserve this art. Preserving passementry is critical because it's two parts. It's art and skill. Uh, this is not something that's just simply a function of, of making passementry. No one can just teach how it's made. They really have to have an understanding of the art of passementry as well. 18th century documentary passementry is relevant today for historical reasons. The preservation of a very, very rich and long history of this form of ornamentation. And there is a very specific design language that goes with it. When I believe when you look, walk into a room and it says, oh, that fabric, that tassel, how beautiful. And it, it is. I'm old enough to be able to say that I have seen Passamontre being very popular, not popular, making a comeback. 21st century designers are making 18th century documentary trimmings relevant today through their choice of pattern. And, and really, it's all in the details. Again, it's in the choice of pattern, it's in the choice of color, and it is in the placement within their schemes. Young designers often have a misconception that trimming is fussy. There are opportunities to finish, to put details that will elevate anyone's interior. And once you have that experience of using just a little bit of trim, I promise you that success, that excitement, that beauty, that luxury will entice you to use it even more. It can work in harmony with the fabrics that it's paired with. It can also be in stark contrast and that creates something uh, very interesting into a scheme. It has tremendous transformative power. Pillows with and without trim uh, can make all the difference in the world. The designers are the ones who make our work worthwhile. The designers have that creativity to place and apply that trimming within their interiors in a way that I could never have imagined. Seeing Marissa and Ed working together is honestly has been a true 
joy and inspiration. Those are two icons in our field, uh, perhaps the two foremost designers of passimetry in the world. Ed and I actually met almost 30 years ago when I was just getting started in the world of passimetry. He really took me under his wing and has been a true mentor throughout my entire career. And fast forward to this decade in which we had the incredible honor to co-collaborate on the development of uh, this exquisite collection, Trianon. In the development of a collection, uh, we go through many iterations of given patterns as we're developing the collection. A collection could start with one pattern, be it a braid or a tassel fringe or even a tie back. Um, and that is where the entire collection grows out of. Trianon is an extremely intricate construction and assembly requiring an enormous amount of handwork and uh, a great deal of attention to detail. Probably the most elaborate is the double tassel tie back. So many of these components are uh, made by hand and individually before they can even be constructed. All of the details that you see here from the arrows to the crisscross to these wraps to this netting are all made by hand. Trimming like this in order to, to manufacturing it today is so exciting because it's something that just 20 years ago while I was in the business was almost impossible to do. Finding that skill and art from craftspeople and now being able to bring that to market today is amazing. Whether you're a designer who loves traditional or you're a designer who just loves luxury and beauty, I think you'll find the opportunity to elevate design using the Trianon Collection.